Good afternoon, my name's Dr. David Nuffell. Um, I'd like to talk about electromagnetic induction for students of A-level physics to help them in their studies. Um, topics covered will include magnetic flux and magnetic flux density, Faraday's law, Lenz's law, induced AMF in the long straight conductor, induced AMF in the rotating coil, AC generators, DC generators, and the Faraday generator or disk generator. So first of all, what do we mean by magnetic flux and flux density? Uh, magnetic flux density, a capital B, is defined, is defined from the equation F equals BIL, where F is the force on a current carrying conductor, carrying current I, B is the field, and L is the length of conductor in the field. Flux density is shown by um, closely spaced lines of magnetic flux as they as they thread through a given area. Um, the amount of flux per square meter. The total amount of flux psi is given by the density multiplied B multiplied by the area A. So psi is equal to BA or B is psi over A. And there's a diagram there showing the concept. The unit of magnetic flux is the Weber, WB. Teslas and Weber's are related. One Tesla is one Weber per meter squared. Um, similarly, for a coil having n capital N turns, we can define the magnetic flux linking the coil, psi, as BAN. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor is proportional to the rate at which magnetic flux is cut by the conductor. Mathematically, uh, E is proportional to d psi by dt. In SI units, the constant of proportionality in this relationship is minus 1, which gives a simple equation, E is equal to minus d psi by dt. Lenz's law gives the direction of the induced EMF, um, and this states that any induced current will flow or an induced AMF will be established in the direction so as to oppose the change producing it. This is also um, part of the conservation of energy. Um, so if I, if I put a north pole in on the top diagram, uh, a north pole is created um, in the coil at that end on the left and the current will be directed to the right. If I then pull the north pole out, um, the magnet moving away from the coil, the current will go in the other direction. Uh, induced EMF in a moving straight conductor. Investigations and experiments show that the EMF induced in a conductor depends upon three factors. The length of the wire in the flux L, the strength of the magnetic field or flux density B, and the speed at which the wire moves V. And we can uh, combine these to, to give E equals BLV. As shown there. Um, EMF produced in a rotating coil, uh, the flux length in psi with a coil of n turns and a constant cross sectional area A equals NAB cos theta. Uh, and since E is d psi by dt, that is equal to minus NAB sine theta d theta by dt. But d theta by dt is 2 pi f. And which is equal to 2 by uh, so theta is 2 pi ft, where f is a frequency, frequency of revolution. So therefore, e is 2 pi f nab sine 2 pi ft. The peak value of the induced EMF e naught occurs when sine 2 pi ft is 1. Therefore, e naught is 2 pi f nab, and e equals e circle 2 pi ft. AC generators. Here we have what we call slip rings at the end of the wires of the coil and the magnet is shown there north and south and the, the uh, coil rotates in a clockwise motion shown. Alternating current uh, comes off to the right there. Um, the generated current is fed from the coil such, in such a way that each side of the coil is always connected to the same output terminal, no matter what the orientation of the coil. This is achieved by slip rings. 
side W of the coil is attached to the slip ring X as shown. Um, similarly, side M of the coil is also in electrical contact with the output terminal and therefore the AC appears at the output terminals. In the case of DC generators, we have a thing called commutators. Um, this means that we get um, a type of sinusoidal output but there's, there's no negative after the cycle. Um, the, the direction is always the same. Um, this is because uh, the same cutting always occurs whichever side we look at. So we get a DC output on that one. It's caused by the difference in the output mechanism as we can see slip rings and commutators accordingly. Finally the Faraday generator is simply a disc rotating in a magnetic field. Um, in one revolution the disc cuts through the flux between X and Y as if a single radius has um, cut through the magnetic field which passes through the whole of the area of the disc and the Therefore, the flux in one revolution is, is B pi um, R2 squared minus R1 squared, where B is the magnetic flux density between X and Y. And so if we gather these things together, we can show that E is F B pi R2 squared minus R1 squared. Um, you typically, typically get the EMF in the order of a few millivolts from the output from this. So here's some simple worked examples to try. First one, if the flux density through a coil of n turns is reduced to zero at a constant rate, what is the um, producing an EMF V in the coil? What was the time taken for this to become zero? And there's a very a variety of options there to choose from. And if you want to try that, the tape will stop and then you can reconnect and have a look at it in a minute. Solution to work to example 1. Since V is minus N psi by dt, that implies that T is N psi over V, so the correct solution is therefore key B. Work to example 2. Diagram shows an aircraft of length L, wingspan X, flying horizontally at speed V in a region where the Earth's magnetic field of uniform flux density B is inclined at the angle theta to the Earth's surface. Which of the following gives the magnitude of the EMF generated between the tips of the wings by EM induction? Again, the answer will follow shortly. Solution to work to example 2. If the field were vertical, then simply the flux cut per second is equal to Bxv. But the field is inclined to angle theta then the vertical component of the Earth's field is B sine theta, making key E the correct response. Uh, finally, we work to example 3. This is a disc generator type question. A metal disc rotates freely between the poles of a magnet in the direction indicated. Um, between the poles P and Q. Uh, make contact with the edge of the disc and the metal axle. If the plane of the disc has a radius of 0.2 meters and rotates at 30 revolutions, beg your pardon, 20 revolutions per second, and at right angles to the uniform field, uh, the EMF induced between P and Q is 3 volts, then they want you to find the flux density of the field in Tesla. The answer will follow shortly. Solution to work to example 3. Total magnetic field cut per second is area times B, which is pi times 0.2 squared times 20 times B, and since V is minus d side by dt, that rearranged gives B is equal to V over pi times 0.2 squared times 20, which is 3.0 over pi times 0.2 squared times 20, and the correct response is therefore key B. Well, thank you for listening to this short presentation on EM induction. Um, I hope it's been used to you in your studies. And for further information, please visit my website 
at www.alevelphysics.co.uk. Thank you very much.